The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. It is mid-April, and depending on your weather, planting may be only a few days away. One of the questions we heard a lot this winter is, should I use starter fertilizer? NPK sulfur, will it drive early season growth? Will it deliver more bushels? To tackle those questions today, I am joined by Omafra Soybean Specialist, Horse Bonner. Hi, Horse. Hey, great to have you on the Soybean School. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Good to be with you. Now, Horst, you've talked to a lot of growers this past winter, and you had a lot of questions about starter fertilizer. You know, what did they want to know? Well, I think with soybeans, the key question is, of course, do starters or pop-ups actually make a significant difference compared to just broadcast? Because, of course, you know, when soybeans first came into the province uh, back in the 1960s, and even right into the 1990s, we really would have said that there's very little response to uh, a starter or a pop-up in soybeans. And the question is, you know, as yields have gone up, has that has that uh, remained the same? And and just before we try to answer the question, I think it's important to recognize too that in terms of a definition, when I say pop-up, I mean uh, fertilizer right in furrow right close to the seed, touching the seed, and then a starter, most people would define that as uh, some sort of a two-by-two two band, and the rate will vary, of course, might be as much as half of crop removal. Um, so that helps us just in our thinking, right? So when, when, when I say starter, I don't necessarily mean just a small amount of fertilizer. I might mean a fair bit to try and feed that crop. So let's talk seed safety. Uh, why do we need to consider when putting down that two-by-two two band well, that's right. I mean, even in a two by two band, even though that's generally quite safe compared to in furrow, right? Um, if we start with the conversation of in furrow, um, we generally in the soybean world say that you should have no potassium at all in furrow because of that salt, uh, that salt index, and because of all these fertilizers, especially N and K, of course, have a high salt index. Um, and so therefore, you know, we don't want that germ to be affected. And soybeans are well known for, for being quite sensitive. So when we're talking about in furrow, we talk about a little bit of N and P being okay, because we want that growth to, to, to get going. We keep K right out of it, right? And that part of that is seed safety. Part of it is because the plant needs a lot of K later, not early on in the season. Both two by two band and in furrow have, have a limit. And the limit, of course, depends a lot on your soil type, sandy soils or dry conditions the limit is much lower. So it's not as easy as giving one number, hmm. although generally, um, you know, in terms of a textbook answer, we say that the N plus K number in a two by two band should not exceed 90 pounds uh, in 30 inch rows. That's lots, right? Hmm. But final thought on that, no potassium in furrow for soybeans is the general rule of thumb that I still go by, although we can get away with a little bit, but not too much, right? Hey, let's talk sulfur. A lot of conversations always about sulfur. Is it required for early season success, and where does it fit? Well, the sulfur question is still, for the soybean world, uh, not completely answered, right? We get kind of some contradictory information out of the U.S. that maybe sulfur and nitrogen has more of a play when seeding early, right, which we're all pushing towards compared to seeding late. And we actually have uh, some nice trials set up this year, or we're hoping to if the weather weather cooperates, to try and answer that question early versus late. So far, of course, you know, when we have applied ammonium sulfate and compared that to just straight urea, uh, we haven't seen that much, right? 2.3 bushels out of straight urea in the spring, 
and 2.9 out of ammonium sulfate. And statistically, that was nothing across the whole, uh, the whole uh, 13 sites. Only one out, of, one out of those sites did we see a statistical response. But to be fair, and to try and answer your question, Bernard, none of those were planted really early. Those were kind of all in a normal uh, planting window. So I think we still don't know for sure whether there's a bit more of a response in early planting. We're going to try and answer that um, over the next couple of years. Hey, let's talk uh, nitrogen here. Um, you know, what's required, you know, eh, when it comes to N? Well, that's part of the fascinating part, too, when it comes to, uh, you know, these big soybean yields. Of course, what we're trying to do is get the canopy closed fast because we know that the quality of light in July is much higher than it is in August. So you want those beans to be fully canopied, um, latest at early pod, pod set. And so, of course, a little bit of nitrogen might help fill that. So part of this uh, timing question that we're trying to answer is, yeah, we're, we're still playing with nitrogen, right? But as you can see from those 13 sites that we just talked about, a 2.3 bushel uh, response is not a huge number. Hmm. Now, what we're going to do is actually increase the amount of N a little bit to to see if we can get some more out of it because that's what our American friends are saying. We need a little more N, especially in a no-till situation to really get that uh, big, big response. Mm. Um, I think the neat part about it is that uh, the response seems to be edging up to some nitrogen as we get into that 70, 80 bushel zone that some of us have been lucky to lucky enough to have the last few years, right? Right. Hey, uh, next up, uh, phosphorus. Do we need P in our starter? We talked about it a little bit, or, bit earlier. How much? Well, the thing you got to understand, of course, is with starters, again, the main, the main two nutrients we're talking about is, are nitrogen and phosphorus. Here's the problem. You know, when you look at uh, how soybean roots respond to phosphorus, you can see from, from this picture, boy, when we feed a little bit of pea, the roots are much more developed, right, than, than when we don't. Logically, here's the problem, right? Soybeans need a lot less phosphorus early on. If you compare them to uh, wheat, you know, wheat uses 15 pounds, corn four pounds, and soybeans only one pound in the first per acre in the first 30 days of life, right? And of course, soybeans also in the seed have to, has, has twice as much phosphorus than something like corn. And so uh, logically speaking, soybeans shouldn't need as much. And here's here's the kicker, right? We've done these trials. Mm -hmm. um, we, we applied 50 pounds of uh, MAP in furrow, and on average, our response across 16 sites was only 1.4 bushels. And the truth of it there, Bernard, was it all came down to soil test. We had three, four bushel responses, but only when the soil test was low, right? right. Yeah. Hey, and that leaves me my last question on potassium, right? You know, what do we need here and how important is your soil test in determining, you know, that rate, that low test versus that adequate, you know, soil test? Yeah, I think you've kind of hit hit the nail on the head in terms of bringing up potassium. That's really what it's still about with soybeans because they're such large removers. Hey, if there's one thing I've learned about uh, pop-ups and starters and broadcast with soybeans, it all comes down to soil test value. Any of those are possible options to get yields up. And, you know, we've seen two sometimes even three bushels to a pop-up, up up to five bushels. I occasionally see six or even seven bushels to a starter. Now I'm talking two-by-two two band, but only if the soil test is low. If the soil test is good or even medium, we have a hard time seeing anything. And that's why as an industry, we're still trying to learn when and where starters or pop-ups really make makes sense. We know broadcast, we know soybeans respond very well to good soil fertility, right? Or even a broadcast uh, springtime application if the soil test is low. 
But if the soil test is adequate, mm, yeah, we're still we're still chasing, you know, a very small number, if anything. Right. Well, Horst, hey, it's always great to have you on the Soybean School. Some great insights. Thanks for stopping by. It's been fun. Thank you.